Years ago, when I was a teacher in the classroom at a university child development center um, as a student, I was part of the staff that worked with the toddlers. And one thing that our toddlers loved to do was play with Play-Doh. And so one thing that we did there that was really fun is we made our own Play-Doh and the children would help us make the Play-Doh. And then of course we would spend lots and lots of time just sitting at the tables and playing with the Play-Doh together. And so today I'm gonna show you how you can make Play-Doh at home with your own child and then some ideas on how you can play with it and some of the reasons why we would even want to play with Play-Doh. You know, you probably remember playing with Play-Doh as a kid. It was just, you know, usually we, we would get the little cans of Play-Doh from the store. It was these bright, vivid colors. It had a certain smell. I used to love playing with that anytime I was in a situation where it was given to me or if we got new Play-Doh at my house. But anyways, I think most of us have some memories of playing with Play-Doh as a kid, and those are usually pretty, pretty positive memories. Toddlers love to play with Play-Dohs, even older children, even, gosh, school age kids like to play with Play-Doh, but there's a lot of reasons why it's good. It's a good thing to do with your kid. For one thing, Play-Doh supports fine motor development. And one of the things that our toddlers and preschoolers really need to do is strengthen up those little fingers. It seems like it's no big deal, but in order to hold a pencil or a marker or any kind of writing utensil when they get to kindergarten and first grade, their little hands need to have some good coordination. And so by playing with things like Play-Doh, we're working on that fine motor development, which will help them a little bit later in ways that don't even feel related, but they are. Play-Doh is also sensory play. It feels really good to the senses. Some kids like this more than others, but most kids will enjoy some Play-Doh. Plus, it also really supports imaginative or pretend play. Because anytime you make something out of Play-Doh, oftentimes you're using little tools and things to help you play that result in pretending that the Play-Doh is something else. And so the cognitive work that happens as children learn how to pretend and do this kind of imaginative play is very good for their development. So I'm gonna teach you how to make the Play-Doh. First of all, the ingredients are very simple. It just calls for flour, water, salt, cream of tartar, and a little bit of oil, and then something to color it with. And so I'm gonna just demonstrate how to make this. I'm gonna turn my camera down here so that you can see what I'm doing. So first of all, I um, am mixing this straight into the pan that I'm gonna cook it in. I like to use this rubber spatula to mix it as well as measure because then I can get all my measurements real, um, real accurate. So it calls for one cup of flour. We add one cup of water and then we're gonna add a half a cup of salt. Most of these ingredients are things that you just have around the house. The one thing that you may not have already is the cream of tartar and you find that in the spice section of the grocery store. Cream of tartar is a little bit pricey. And so I have found that if you find a grocery store that has the bins of spices, oftentimes you can get cream of tartar at a much lower price than if you're paying for the small little thing of it like I have here. But anyways, we need two teaspoons of cream of tartar. Play-Doh is not a baked good, and so it's not entirely important to be very, very accurate with your measures. You wanna just get them pretty approximate. So there's my two teaspoons of cream of tartar. And then I need two tablespoons of oil. And for this, I am just using um, a canola oil, but whatever oil you have is fine. A vegetable oil probably would be a little bit lighter than olive oil. So here's what my mixture looks like. It's just all of the things and I'm just gonna stir it up. And of course this, all of these steps I've done so far, all of these could be done by your child. You could put the flour in the cup together and then they can dump it in, but they will enjoy doing this. And as you can see, it's a very liquidy mixture consistency here. Another thing I'm gonna add right now is um, some food coloring. And I'm gonna just, this is just regular old food coloring. I'm using blue. I'm just gonna put a few drops in just to give it a little bit of tint. 
You don't have to do this. You can always make white Play-Doh, but I think a color is nice. There's lots of different kinds of food coloring. You can get powdered food color, gel food color, or this liquid food color. Just whatever you've got in your kitchen, if you have some, just use that. Sometimes you can add a little bit of extract to your Play-Doh if you want it to smell nice. You can even make the color match the smell that you put in, but you can put in a little bit of vanilla or peppermint or lemon any kind of extract that you might have at home. So here's what it looks like. So the next step is just to cook it. And so you're gonna put it on a surface. I've got a little burner here. And I'm gonna cook my Play-Doh. Let's see, move this over just a tad. This is a very sticky mixture and um, it will stick to your pan. So the more non-stick your pan, <laughs> the better. This one is, well, I give it about a, a C plus on non-stick. This pan It's kind of old, but it's, it's a good one for this Play-Doh. I will let you see, I'll let you know when it is solid and ready to take off of the heat. Okay, this is starting to thicken up a little bit. And as you can see, it just begins to kind of stick to the bottom of the pot as it is getting done. You wanna stir it pretty constantly. And then when it turns into a ball, we know that it is done. So as you can see, this is turning into a ball. It is almost done. I'm just gonna keep turning it over and over and make sure that there's no parts on it that have any kind of liquid to them yet still, because that won't be very good for our Play-Doh. We want it to be all kind of gelled up and solid. If you cook it too long, it'll turn a little crisp, <laughs> which won't be very good for Play-Doh. So I think that's about done here. So I'm going to take it off the heat and turn it onto the counter. I'm gonna take it out of the pan and just give it a second to cool off a little bit. Once it's cooled to the touch, it can be a little bit warm still. At this stage of the Play-Doh, you could add a little bit of glitter or something like that if you're interested in it. It just kind of depends really on the age of your child and if you think they're gonna be eating this Play-Doh or not. Our toddlers will eat anything that is uh, that they're playing with. That's just kind of what they do. They're in the oral stage of development. And so this is very edible Play-Doh. You saw everything I put in it. It's all stuff that's just straight out of your kitchen cabinets. But it's not gonna to taste too good. So if they eat it, they're not gonna eat very much. And so, but for that reason, I think it's really important to think about the th what you put inside it if you think your child is apt to eat it. So let me show you how I'm gonna knead this. You'll knead the Play-Doh just like you're kneading bread. And so you just take it from the top, pull it for forward, and then just kind of push it with your palm. I don't know if you can tell, but this is a really nice, soft, pliable dough. It sticks a little bit. It's all right, you might wanna use a, a plastic mat, silicone mat to knead it. I'm just doing it straight on my counter here because I don't mind that. When you knead it, it will get even more soft and um, pliable and easy to work with, nice, nice feeling. And this still is just pleasantly warm. It would certainly be okay to give it to a child at this point to ask them to knead it and they won't be able to knead it like I'm doing here, but they will enjoy squishing it with their hands and flattening it with their palms. So there you go. I think our Play-Doh is finished. It is beautifully soft. It's a nice color. If you wanted to sit down with your child and play with Play-Doh, here's some things that you could just put on the table and they could play with you. Cookie cutters, of course. Any cookie cutters that you've got around the house. There's lots of cookie cutter and Play-Doh toys out there that you can purchase, but you don't have to buy all that. You've probably got stuff in your kitchen and around the house that you can use with Play-Doh. So cookie cutters, any kind of roller. This can be like a rolling pin if you have one. I've got a rolling pin that is really great for children because it's kind of smaller and it works with their little hands. So anything to roll out with. Plasticware like plastic spoons, plastic forks. Those work nice with Play-Doh. You can take straws and cut them into pieces and use those to poke things in. A lot of times there's children's placemats or other dishes that have shapes that are kind of built into it, especially those little high chair trays. That would be really fun with Play-Doh. Legos and Duplo blocks, googly eyes, Mr. Potato Head pieces, cars, 
You could even go out in the garage or your toolbox and find things like large bolts and screws and those kinds of things, so long as they're not so small, your child would eat them and swallow them. Anything that you would you know, give your child to play with will oftentimes work very nicely with Play-Doh. The safety scissors are also really great with Play-Doh because this also works with your fine motor development and gives them the opportunity to cut something that's gonna cut really nicely. And so scissors, child scissors with Play-Doh is a lot of fun. So, some questions you might have. One is, how long does this Play-Doh last? If you put this in like an airtight plastic container or even a Ziploc bag and keep it sealed up, it'll stay nice to play with for weeks. It'll, it'll it lasts quite a long time as long as it's not out in the air. What if your child is allergic to gluten? Well, in that case, you would not use the recipe I just showed you. You would use a recipe for a gluten-free Play-Doh. And so I'm gonna attach with this video a recipe, this recipe that I've just shown you, plus a gluten-free recipe. Check that out if you want to explore this at home with your kid. So in closing, have fun making Play-Doh with your kid. Cooking with your child is always a fun thing to do. It introduces them to the joy of creating something that they can actually eat or play with in this case. But mostly what they want is they wanna be with you. They wanna engage with you and experience this, this fun thing with you. So once you've made your Play-Doh, just put it in a place and if things feel a little bit um, like they need to calm down, pull out your Play-Doh, pull out some things to play with with the Play-Doh and talk with your child as together you play. Not only will it be fun for them, but it, it will be kind of nice for you as well. I'll see you next time.